unlike many schematic capture programs, LTSPICE 4 schematic editors wouldn't explicitly for running SPI simulations. This means that if you click on an object, the default behavior is to plot the voltage on the wire or current through that component, not select the object for editing. Hence, the first couple of times you use the schematic editor may be a little bit different than your previous GUI experience. Welcome to LTSPICE 4 schematic editor video. I'm your host, Gabino Alonso, and this video provides you an introduction to the use of LTSPICE schematic capture program and the layout of a simple circuit so that you can draft and make edits of your own design quickly. Once you've evoked LTSPICE 4, the first step will be to generate a new schematic, and a symbol is provided to you on the far left side of the toolbar. Once you have a new schematic generated, you can now start adding components to your schematic. You notice on the toolbar there's a component um, menu here provided by this AND symbol. You can go and click on that. And in my particular application, I'm interested in using a linear technology uh, device as the basis of my design. So I can go and search for that device, click OK. And now I have the shadow relief outline of that symbol. And I can move it around my schematic, decide on a location, and do a left mouse click for placement. Now as I move the cursor away, you'll see that that device is still active. To break out of that, all I need to do is hit the escape key or the right mouse button. Now my primary form of navigation of the schematic is going to be through the zoom in, zoom out option. So you notice up on the toolbar I have a way of zooming out by clicking this magnifying glass with a minus sign. Likewise, I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and zoom out. We don't have time to do a complete layout, but I did want to highlight a couple of things to you on how to manage and place components in the schematic editor. So one thing I want to note is that the component library is quite extensive. There's all these different components. You'll have time later on to search all of these. But one in particular I need right now is a voltage source. So I'm going to go and click voltage. Likewise, I could have just typed voltage and it would have came up as well. Click OK, and that allows me to place it in my schematic. Now, you notice just like before that that is in that relief uh, image. So to place, I can just do a left mouse click. And to exit that component, I hit the escape or right mouse click. Likewise, I have ground symbols available, so I can reference it to ground. And then I also have capacitors, resistors, inductors, diodes, and such available on the toolbar. So I can go ahead and, for example, place an input capacitor here, another reference to ground. And then to wire up the components, I can easily click on the wire here. And then to wire up components, I just basically begin at a node, click. That starts the wire. I can go through the components. And then anytime I need to make a turn, I just go and do a click. That gives me the ability now to go in a new direction and carry on the wire over, do another click, and then finally go to the final node and then click, and then I made my connection. If I now hit the escape key or right mouse button, you'll notice that LT Spy Schematic Editor takes care of the cleaning up the wires for me. So that's kind of the basic manipulation. How do you put components down and then place them? And then how do you go ahead and wire things up? Also, with regard to rotating components, um, which is helpful. If you notice here, I can click on the inductor symbol, it provides me inductor, but let's say I'd rather than a vertical configuration, I want to do a horizontal. I can come up here to the rotate symbol and go and rotate that a couple of times, and get the configuration I want, and then go ahead and place it in my schematic. Mirror option allows me to mirror up an image as well to get a different configuration. If at any time I want to undo options, I can go ahead and click up here, undo. And likewise, I can go ahead and redo. Another interesting feature is also this duplicate or copy option. So I can go ahead and click on a device, and then it allows me to make multiple copies of it. So I can do that, and that's quite helpful too. And that is also works be going between one schematic and another schematic as well. Another interesting, uh, useful tool is this cut, which allows me to remove elements from the uh, editor. Also available is this move and drag option. The move is nice because it allows you to take an element in your schematic and remove it, leaving the lines behind. Alternately, you can click on the drag, which allows you to move the element while the lines maintain connection. That's quite helpful when you need to tidy up your schematic and uh, kind of clean up your layout. Now, rather than wire up a diagram, I'm going to jump to a solution and go from there to highlight some more features of the schematic editor. If I right click on the model, I can jump to the data sheet or website to grab the data sheet. Likewise, I can open this macro module test fixtures. And what do you know? It's already drafted for me. So we can start from there and talking about some other components. So let's now cover some of the component attributes in the schematic. If we take our crosshairs and we bring it over to the input voltage source, we'll notice that it changes from a crosshairs to a hand. If I do a right mouse click, 
I can now see I can change the DC value quite easily at a series resistance as well. If I click on advanced, you'll see that we have some more advanced functions available for modeling. You have a pulse, sine wave, exponential type function, single frequency FM, piecewise linear as well. Okay, if I cancel out of that. If I come over to the resistor, I can also do a right mouse click and I can easily change the value. Likewise, I can also go and select an actual uh, resistor value from the library. If I go to the inductor, I can also select a different types of inductors here, and they're all listed here. And we have a pretty uh, extensive library of inductors. Also, I can extend it out to different values as well if I want to search to see what's available. One thing we uh, do often is we, rather than model in a resistor in series with this capacitor, we'll actually encapsulate that series resistance with the model for the capacitor. And to view that, all you have to do is hold the control key and again, right mouse click, and that will give you the component attributes. And you can actually scroll through that and you notice that on Spice Line here, we've added an R series 12.1K and we made that visible. So those are some more advanced editing uh, capabilities. Last but not least would be to add a simulation command to the schematic. Under uh, simulate, you can click on edit simulation command, specify the type of analysis you'd like to do. Stop. In this case, we're doing a transient with a stop time of 1.5 milliseconds, and we're starting up all the uh, external DC supply voltages at zero. Once we have that in place, we can now go ahead and click the running man and start executing our simulation and start probing our circuit in the waveform viewer. One important thing I wanted to note was the units for specifying uh, a circuit element attributes. So uh, this slide gives you kind of an overview. The key one you want to be careful with is to make sure that meg is used for 10 to the 6, not m, because m will be classified as a milli. And also when you enter values for uh, you know, uh, capacitors, just enter 1 as opposed to 1f, because that will be interpreted as 1 femto. So those are just some key points to remember. And again, a quick overview of the schematic editor toolbar. We have, again, for placing and drawing wires and drawing elements, those commands available there that we've covered. Likewise, we talked about move, drag. There's also the undo, redo, rotate, mirror. There's also ways to add comments and also additional spice directives. And last but not least, we have the ability to delete, duplicate. You can also paste stuff from st different schematics. I hope this video has provided you with a good introduction to using LT Spice 4 schematic capture program, and I wish you the best in your simulations.